Now, we all know what Raspberry Pis are and they're great little machines for those who want to build something interesting, but did you know there are plenty of other alternatives? And our great friend here, Simon, is going to show us what these alternatives are and what they can do for you. So Simon, take it away. Okay, so we were talking about, we were talking about that uh, Raspberry Pi, it, um, we have an alternative. We call it industrial alternative. And so we were looking at and talking about things like this board, which is a ROC 3C board. And as a board, it has a load of features that industrial folks are interested in. So as a 3B, priced the same as a, a Raspberry Pi 3B, but it has uh, an EMMC module on it, which allows you twice as fast and more resilient to boot from. That's the EMMC module. What's interesting, you can put different ones on there and you flash it just the same as you would a micro SD card. Also that particular module has the ability to put up to a one terabyte NVMe drive on an M2 slot, as an example. So we do the, the ROC 3 range, the ROC 4 range, and the ROC 5 range. The other interesting board we've got here today is the ROC 3B, two Ethernet ports. Um, on the back, the EMMC module we talked about. We also talked about a uh, 3G or 4G SIM card, an M2 connector for a full size NVMe drive. And on the other side, the interesting thing is that you can choose your own RF module depending on what you're interested in. So another RF module and then another 3G or 4G module. That board's about 55 pounds. This board's around 35 pounds. Then we go all the way up Sorry, to the- 55, 55 pounds for that one? Yes. Tell me about the processor. Uh, it's the same processor as the, uh, a similar processor to the, these are A, A53's quad core. Um, the interesting one is the 5B or the 5 series. So we have a 5A, 5B, and we have a compute module with a 5. The 5B will do 4K video in, 8K video out. Again, the same board structure as this B, so it'll take a full size uh, M.2 NVMe on it. It'll allow you to have, so the processor has four A76s, four A55s, a Mali GPU, also a neural processor with up to six tops. So to say that these machines would blow the pie out of the water is not an understatement. In, in the right circumstances, absolutely. In all circumstances. <laughs> well, in all circumstances. We would say the interesting thing here is that you don't need to buy a second board. We do the 5A processor, which is an RK3588. We do that in a Pi 4 form factor. And again, with the 4K video in, 8K video out, it's, it's a really strong board, but it also already has a neural processor on it. So you can run products like YOLO on it to, to do image recognition. Of course, you yeah. don't need to buy anything else. It's got everything on board. Now, the 8K video out is quite an interesting thing because before this conversation, you actually talked about 3D printers and how that's quite important. So could you just explain to the audience why 8K for industrial systems is actually quite crucial? So 8K video out can be used in a number of places. We had a demo um, at Embedded World which had a 8K screen and you could have 48 TV monitors worth of security cameras. Blimey. But when you went up close, you could still read the text. I was talking about if you used a 8K video out on a 8 inch touch screen, a screen that size, if you did that, 8K video on that screen is so small per pixel, it's at the molecule size. So if you had the material, you could actually print molecules, which could be organs. You could 3D, if we, we don't have the technology today, but you could 3D print an organ for someone who needs a new whatever. They already use 3D printing for teeth. So even though that the even though the technology is not there yet, it's giving you that future proof. It's saying, if you install that now, you can still use it in five years time. If a screen comes out with a new technology, it's still going to work and it's yes. still be viable. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The 8K video out is just an Mali GPU. 
for the price point, the 5A started about £100 for a 4 gig, uh, and then the 5Bs, which have more I.O. on them and more capability, about £120 they start at. Now, I think, it should, I think I'd like to just say to the audience that even though a lot of these machines are, are more expensive than your typical Pi, what you have to understand is that, that the price per top, so that makes sense, the amount of power you're getting out of that machine is more, so you spend a little bit more, but as a result, you're getting four extra cores, you're getting higher, I imagine you're getting higher core frequencies, you're probably getting more memory, I suspect you're getting better GPU capabilities, better TPUs, that kind of thing yeah. we're talking about? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we have, we have what's a, a Redaxa CM3, so this is the compute module, has all the functions of this board, but all on the compute module, just like the compute module 4 from Raspberry Pi, but we have a third connector on our module. Oh, I love that disconnect. So we have, instead of just the Raspberry Pi has two, we have three connectors to give you more GPIO. You know what? I like the idea of three connectors. That's actually more stable. I prefer that, to be fair. So what happens then is you've got this board, which has the CM5, yeah. and the CM5 has that RK3588 processor with all the things we've already talked about. Now, another question I've got is that, are any of these machines x86 or are they all ARM? These are all, these are all ARM processors. You've got the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA boards we offer as well. And these boards over here are Debix. So this is using the NXP, um, IX8 and IX10 processor range. We don't just focus on, on one range of single board computers. We understand our customers have different requirements and different needs, which is why we have the NVIDIA boards as well. And so what's going on here with the NVIDIA board? So the NVIDIA boards, we have a range, but the Jetson Nano and the Jetson Orin are the main boards we supply today. Interestingly enough, we have, um, we have a board called the C100, which has a module that uh, is going end of life for NVIDIA and Jetson, but we still have them on the C100 boards. And so which, so, so which one is this here in terms of like, is that's it? An Orin. That's an Orin, right, okay. I'm surprised, so, is it just this add-on card here? Yes. Yeah. So the interesting thing is uh, we do the fully, a fully loaded Orin board, by example, mm. costs 2,000 pounds. Blimey. But has 275 tops. So you have to then divide that down. So 2,000 pounds, 275? Yeah. That's 250, let's make it this easy. What's, what, how many times 250 go to, uh, uh, for eight times? Yeah. Eight times, and what you're saying is that, uh, I have no idea what I just calculated. I'm trying to figure out how much it costs per top. The point is, if you compare that to other machines, you might find that even though it's more expensive, you're actually saving money for, for, for the power that you're getting. So at, at 275 tops, you can do things that other boards can't. Just, yeah. So in terms of frames yeah. per second, if you imagine that with six tops, if you're doing 4K video, you might be able to do image recognition on a 4K video at let's say 15 to 20 frames per second. Yeah. But 275 tops, there, you could be doing it real time. You do all the frames. You do all the frames, you're doing yeah. it full real time, which means that information can yeah. be used in real time. Yeah. So that could be things like self-driving, systems running around in yeah. warehouses, automated yeah. driving. And so that, it just it's just the difference between night and day, essentially in those applications here. Yeah. Yeah.